Incoming transmission. Greetings everybody, Irish Trekkie, back another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection Review. We have issue 176 from our friends over at Hero Collector. This time we have the Torellian Starship, yes, iconic ship for all you Star Trek geeks and nerds out there, my kindred spirits. Uh, really looking forward to reviewing this model and um, big shout out to Hero Collector for sending this over. It gives me the opportunity to review of this fantastic vessel for you fine folks and that's all possible because of your legendary support over the many years I've been doing this. So big shout out to you folks and an equally amazing shout out to the Patreon supporters and PayPal supporters uh, to the channel as well helping out on a monthly basis. Your direct investment helps me refine and continue to do these reviews as well to uh, you know spread the word of hero collectors united out there. Uh, anyway I think I'm losing my mind at the moment <laughs> but uh, you all rock you know you do and uh, listen I can't I don't have enough time on this fine blue ball of ours to thank every one of you but um, hopefully these videos um, will do just that anyway we have a great magazine here and a model that we're going to look at so stay tuned for some up close and personal details here we'll see what goodies lay inside of issue 176 and uh, we'll be comparing this ship to another in the line to get a sense of scale and a sense of a essence out of it so let's check out the ship and we'll see what goodies lay inside the magazine okay so we'll take her out of her packaging give her mount Ugh. in our globular propulsion system oh it just looks so cool front heavy plastic core that down for a minute what do we have five nine three six a slash a and we put our base in there as well which is why we're here and uh, see what she's like so yeah there's an oddity to this stand where it doesn't really fit in to be honest with you because it's pretty much designed to go that way, which is, uh, yeah, not as depicted in uh, the magazine. But uh, I suppose you could really wedge it. You could really wedge it in there. But it's a shame that the mount is kind of like that. But yeah, you're kind of showing the butt of it. But uh, we'll see what it's like on the stand as well. But or on the on our display stand as it rotates but uh yeah that's the kind of the biggest thing about this it's just you can see this design element in here it's totally for this subsection of the ship itself it's just not designed to go in that way get your 3d printers going gentlemen and gentlewomen uh I'm sure there's many a collector out there that could do with a, another stand for this. Anyway, let's get up close and personal with the ship, shall we? Okay, so here we have our Torellian Plague ship. A little bit of a paint anomaly just on the front of it there. Nothing too, too crazy. And then you have that globular propulsion system there, which is actually quite nice. There's no seams. So the seams are hidden on the inside. Die cast. Plastic ventral section, die cast dorsal section, obviously plastic in here. And you have that structural unit just on the inside of it. Again, window alignment and the paint seems fine. To be honest, it's slight, ever, ever so slight as drift along here. You have some subtle as tacking with some nice detail along here. The sculpt is quite nice. Again, you have your engine propulsion section back here. Seam is going along the sides as you would generally expect. Ventral section, nice, nice hidden seam in there to be honest with you. Ventral section is just like the dorsal. You can see a little bit of the drift on the, the window applications there. Nothing too crazy. Plain enough at the back. But again, the point of focus here is that globular propulsion unit as I keep referring to. This is so fun to say, globular. Again, you can see that Aztecan, 
just coming through on that as well. Again, a great design. And again, it was redressed very nicely as well through to Voyager. And uh, yeah, now this is cool. Like this design stuck in my head. I remember when I was seeing it first, like nothing ever really looked like this moving forward through Trek. And when it appeared so early as well, um, great to see it. Again, it must have been a interesting one to make a practical model of it as well, but definitely give that aura, that aura something different. But uh, let's see what she's like on the stand proper, um, the way it's designed to here, unfortunately. But listen, I'm not going to continue on harking about it. Uh, wish it was clamped on here, but it's going to be clamped on the front. But uh, let's see what she looks like. So here she is. It's precariously put in the right way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually the wrong way for the stand as we've already discussed. I'm afraid to even look at the ship as it is right now because it could pop off at any second. But uh, it would have been nice if it was able to be displayed like this. Um, but for you folks at home, that didn't take much to pop out there. Um, this is the way the stand came. So this is the way, if you don't want it to fall off, but listen, I'm kind of looking at it going, okay, you know, when life gives you lemons, you know, there's always the option to make lemonade. And um, okay, we don't have a ship that's orientated like this, but it's not the end of the world either. Um, you could have it that it's, we often see the ships pointing upwards. Rarely do we see a ship that's designed to kind of look like it's swooping down. So again, you're gonna see a lot of the design coming up over here yeah it's covering some of the the nice uh detail on the sides there as well but again you could have it just instead of facing out this way flip it around and yeah you're seeing a little bit of this but you're kind of getting a nice top shot on it anyway but listen that's just the 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 the, the optimist in me you know um i'm not uh capable of designing stand i know a few people out there with uh, some handy printer skills that probably could do something but um i'm probably just going to leave it as it is but um let's compare it to a ship on the line uh, just to get a sense of scale shall we we haven't seen the frangie marauder in like about three years i'd say if, if not even more um but uh, i put the stand on the other way around on this ship as well because you can do that um this this ship can sit uh, in two different configurations kind of but um yeah do you know what the two iconic uh alien ships from tng and uh, man i haven't i haven't had eyes on those tiger stripes in a while <laughs> so thank you torellian plague ship for giving the opportunity to dust off the frangy marauder gives you a sense of scale no doubt uh frangy marauder was an early addition to the collection as we're nearing the end and uh, again, some nice companion pieces in the collection as well. Where are you going to store your plague ship? Are you going to put it on a separate shelf to keep it away from the rest of the fleet for the fear of the devastation that uh, the, the crew of the ship could bring the rest of your uh, fleet? <laughs> or are you going to put it in the, the TNG Hall of Fame in your collection as well? Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are off the ship itself. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy enough with it. Yes, elephant in the room. Weakest point is definitely the, the stand configuration, but you know, someone goofed up somewhere or through testing, the other one just wasn't secure enough. I don't know, but uh, it is what it is. Um, anyway, let's move on with the video, shall we? So we have a crew of eight, 560 meters uh, in use in the 24th century and uh, location Alpha Quadrant. So let's see what we have here, shall we? We have our four sections, the Torellian Starship, designing the ship, making of Haven, and uh, on-screen appearances. Here we have our mount, and uh, here we have some up-close shots of the ship with no extra detail bar, the fact that this is a plague ship. And uh, yeah, interesting. Just, again, a very interesting design ship, to be honest with you. Which I always am. <laughs> So, the tragic Torellians were thought to have been wiped out until the last of their plague ships came to Haven. 
So the sight of a Trillion ship on approach to a planet was always cause for panic. Victims of a biological war that left them as carriers of a deadly virus, Trillion starships were often hunted down and destroyed for fear of the devastation they brought with them. So yeah, again, very powerful story from the get-go. Although the Trillion ships could carry hundreds, by the time uh, of its arrival to Haven, the ship crew had been reduced to eight, the last of the Trillions. So yeah, it's again, crazy, crazy heavy story, which, you know, is testament to how awesome the writers were on uh, Star Trek. Uh, Trillion ships were highly distinctive due to the globular propulsion system, making them instantly recognizable uh, in contrast to standard warp nacelle powered ships. Globular engines, interesting. Um, let's see here. Yeah, there's some nice little goodies. Um, yeah, there's some nice goodies in here in relation to Haven and the Trillions as well. Stay tuned. I actually have this. It's it's in the it's in the list to record. It's right over there. You can't see it, but um, it's coming. So stay tuned for the special issue number twenty two, the to plan a half from the awesome movie that is First Contact. Anyway, here we have our Trillions, the poor buggers. Um, globular propulsion system, drive section, forward section, flight deck. Again. Very distinctive design, really awesome. So designing the Trillion ship, uh, the Trillion Plague ship was among the earliest starships designed for Star Trek The Next Generation. As the new series went into production in the spring of summer of 1987, um, yeah, so in the final draft for Haven written by Tracy uh, Torme described the Trillion vessel approaching the planet Haven as, I have to, I have to find, what did they describe it as? Let's have a look. Uh, 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 uh. On screen, a small image of a vessel's strange, unearthly design. Its center is a shiny globe. Dozens of spikes, spike-like structures jut out from it, tumbling uh, end over end as the vessel moves along. Ooh, interesting. Though, er, though clearly alien, uh, there is a pleasing aesthetic quality to the ship which gives off a soft violet glow. Interesting, interesting. So there's going to be some cool um insight in here and some fantastic uh ship renders by uh andrew probert by the looks of it that's a really cool one actually and here we have that aesthetic that was kind of uh highlighted by the cast the writing uh department so redresses of the trillion ship so we have transfigurations the game it's in d space nine captive pursuits voyager the jet rail as well so you can see the front end uh, being rounded off, the globular propulsion system being capped off as well. It's actually kind of a pretty cool design there um, as well. And then you have some up close shots of the um, studio model. Again, early days of TNG. So you're looking at practical, practical models, y'all. So making of Haven. So it, it began its life as love beyond time and space. <laughs> gotta love, gotta love the names of uh, Star Trek shows. And then you have a lot of insight into the episode as well, which is cool. So, on-screen appearance, Haven, Star Trek Next Generation, designed by Andrew Probert. And again, showed up in many uh, redresses as well. So, we'll close off there. Coming up soon, we have the Shelyak Colony Ship, issue 177. We're, oh, we're itching so close to the end of the official collection. Uh, but again, many a frontier in Star Trek, so don't fret, my friends. Plenty of ships still to be reviewed. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And we close off on the magazine for now. So folks, there is the issue review uh, of 176, the Trillion Starship. Let me know what your thoughts and opinions are off the ship. And um, yeah, let me know if you liked it or not. If you're new to the channel and you want to find out about the collection, do check out the description box below for the links to Hero Collector's Starship page. And uh, you can see all the other reviews that we've done in the collection over the last number of years as well. Um, you can support the channel by sharing and liking this video. And Patreon and PayPal links are down in the description along with the merch store as well. And you'll also find the, affili the, the affiliated, the connected uh, fa Facebook and uh, web resources for the collection also as long along with, I can't even talk in this video, 
along with all of my social network uh, sites as well. So drop by, say hello, and uh, we'll have a good old chat about the collection to date. Um, as always, thanks for taking the time out of your day to stop by and check out this video review. Uh, you are all super amazing and beautiful people. I've been your local Irish Trekkie. Have a great rest of the day, weekend, week, and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy and goodbye.